Hey, it's Christine, and I'm here to show you some of the basics of 90. To start off, how the system is set up. So everybody has their own individual login to your company, and you can set up as many teams as you like to. A team is usually going to be when you're running a level 10 meeting within a department or a group of people, you'll create a team within 90. And you can see on this first page that we're on, the My Focus page, I'm going to see all of my to-dos and all of my rocks, and that's across any team that I'm a part of. Over here is the left navigation, and each of the following pages that we go to are going to have this same team's filter, but I'm only going to be looking at a single team. So I can switch and look at different information just by toggling like this. So now I'm looking at marketing, and then I can go back to our leadership team. But that's how you're going to navigate and see your specific content across different groups within the account. The page we're on now is data. Data is going to be your scorecard. We just call it data because we've added a little bit of extra content within here. So within data, you can have weekly measurables and you can also have monthly measurables. To create an item, you just use the plus sign. It works really similar to an Excel sheet where you've got your item here. You can see the goal. You can activate an average column if you'd like to see that within settings. And then all you'll do is just click and type all the numbers save automatically when you enter them in and you can see they turn red and green that's just based off the goal that you've set and if you'd like to update that goal all you need to do is click on these items and the details are over here to the right hand side you can set up greater than less than equal to mins and maxes update details add owners on here and then the benefit of using the system is really anything within here has this more actions button and you can turn things into issues or to do's right from here. So if you see a measurable that's off track, warm leads, that's red, that means we've been off track for three weeks in a row. We can come over here, make it an issue. When we're creating this issue, it tells us the last three weeks of data that we've got here, what our goal is, and then it just makes it really easy to save to our issues list. Monthly is going to look really similar. The main difference is that you've got the months up top here, but same way that you would go in, enter data, add information, and edit. The next page up is rocks. Our rocks to do's and issues in the system work really similarly. So whenever you want to add content, all you do is use the create button right here. And then that defaults to creating a rock because I'm on that page. But you can switch it to to do, issue, or headline as well. Between any of those, you'll always say, all right, who do I want to assign this to? And you'll click on either the image or the initials right there. Um, give it a quick title, description, your due date gets auto sent to 90 days out or for it to do seven days out. And then if I cancel out of this, we can open up one that has a bit more content entered. So here we can see our rock. We've clicked on it. We can see the status over here, which we can update to on track, off track, or done. And then the details of the rock are over here to the right. So usually people will go through and make it smart. They'll add some milestones, a feature that you do need to activate in settings. Um, and then you can add attachments. You can write comments on here. And anybody can come in and make a comment. Um, you know, it gets date and time stamps. So you kind of have a nice record of how that rock has been progressing. And then just like we saw earlier, more actions button, you can turn these into issues or to-dos as well. And then we even have a little shortcut on here where if you see something that needs to be turned into an issue, just right click on it and you can take those actions from there as well. You can also see your completion rate. So if you hover over this icon in the top right, it tells you your company rock completion rate and your rock completion rate across all of them. So our company rocks stay to the top, and then I have each person's name that's on the team below here, and you can see what they're responsible for, whether it be a company or an individual. To-dos will work really similarly. So we've just got them all on a list here. We can see who owns it over here to the right. Um, clicking on owner, do by title, just organizes them. And then we've got the same, you know, completion right here, same ability to click on the items, same sort of details to the right hand side. So there's a lot of consistencies when we're looking at rocks, to do's and issues just to make the platform really easy to use. The issues page has short term and long term issues on it. So you're going to be able to see your weekly level 10 items and then also those items that are on your VTO. And it makes it easy, you know, maybe you're talking about something during a meeting and you decide, hey, Let's move this to the quarterly instead. They all have this clock icon, so it's really easy to move it back and forth there. 
I'll jump into a level 10 meeting. This will give you a better idea of how people usually IDS. Uh, but on this page, you'll see any headlines that people have added during the week. Again, using that create button, your past meetings are going to be listed out here. But really, when you want to start a meeting as a team, go ahead and press start meeting. Usually people will share their screen, whether it be virtually or if you're in the same room, just throw it up onto a central TV. And then once you're in here, everything's timed. You've got your agenda over here to the left hand side and any page you click on, it just pulls in the same information that we were just looking at. So everything works the same way. It's really just a matter of getting it into this really easy format for you and having everything timed within the system. The headlines page is just going to pull up any headlines people have added during the week and then of course you can create new ones if you'd like to. And then within these you can take notes, you can make them cascading messages. So what that means is in the meeting the, there's a cascade button that shows up on the more actions. So if you press cascade you can say alright we're hiring a marketing person, we told our team about it but maybe we should let you know our two marketing teams know if they weren't aware. So we can select those teams here. As soon as we save that, it's going to go on to their headline section and it'll say cascaded from the leadership team and it's just a really easy way to send details back and forth. And now we can say we've discussed that one, it goes in our discussed headlines and it gets saved and archived with the meeting. Let's skip over to IDS. Within here you'll see a couple things different from our normal issues page. One being the top three are highlighted, so you're able to really easily see what you guys have prioritized. And then also to prioritize these items, you can just drag and drop by hovering over to the left here and then moving them around. We also have a right click and then move to top and bottom of list option right here. And then if you'd prefer to just select three issues at a time, just use the issue selector over here. So click this button. It opens up the issues so I can look at these, call out the ones that I want to move to the top, and then as soon as I select those three, they're going to just auto push to the top for me. And then at that point, I can click on each of these. Usually I'll take detailed notes within these during a meeting. So if you want to break it out and write out IDS or just kind of take free form notes, either way, it's really helpful because everything in the system is searchable. So you have this search option. Um, you can always go back and look at your previous content in the archive, and it's just an easy way to find content. And then on top of that, you're going to be able to create to-dos out of your issues. So if you do end up taking notes within here, it makes it really convenient when you create a to-do. Maybe we want to assign this to Dade and Jason, and each of those two guys need to go in and update an aspect of process. Now each of them get that to-do. Um, they have all the context from the meeting, so it makes it really helpful for being able to go back during the week. Now that we've saved the to-do, we can mark this as done. And then as soon as you mark items as done, they stay on the list. So just like rocks and to-dos, nothing happens to them until you physically archive them. So if you'd like to take these off, we can press archive all. And those get taken off the list and then pushed into this archive section. So those two actions of archiving items and then being able to look at it right here work the same way for rocks, to-dos, issues, and then even as we start getting into some of the feedback conversations where you can open these up, see the details, and then if you even wanted to unarchive these, you could. And when we move on to conclude, so we get a recap of our to-dos. So here's some leftover from the previous week that we didn't get done, and then here's two new ones that we created. We can see those cascading messages that we sent out. We've got our ratings, which, you know, maybe we don't want to have the first person write the meeting every time in alphabetical order. We can shuffle them up and have it switch. And then you can also send a meeting recap email. So this is automatically checked off. So as soon as you save and exit the meeting, this would send. If you don't want to send a recap email, just uncheck that. Uh, but it's going to be great. I'll uncheck it for now since we're just doing a test meeting. But as soon as I save and exit, that would send off. And then I also get a record of that meeting in my past meetings list. So I can open this up really easily and see what were my headlines, what were my cascading messages, my solved issues, the to-dos created, and I can open up each individual one of those. Um, and I can even go through and see the ratings or the how long I spent in each section for the meeting. So these are that's really the main detail that would get emailed out to you. 
We also have a print agenda button. So if you did want to have like a really physical hard copy in people's hands for the meeting, um, just press that. It gives you a breakdown of the meeting of the sections and your actual content within here. And then if you look like at our to-do list, we can see things that are crossed off. So marked as done, and then you have the status for the rock section. If I keep going here, I also have my scorecard. Moving on, so next up is our VTO, and this is split up by team as well. So with the VTO, you can have a leadership, and then you can also have departmental VTOs. The core values, the core focus, and the tenure target will be set by the leadership team and then cascaded to the other teams. So when you get to another team, you're not going to be able to edit those three fields, but you'll see the content. And then each team can have its own marketing strategy. It can have its own three-year picture, its own traction section. And if I press edit on these, you can kind of see the details here. It just kind of opens up so I can make changes to that content. And the great thing is there's a lot of actionable items in here. So when we're looking at goals for the year, our accountability chart being filled out is one of those. Maybe we want to click on that and add some details within here, attach some documents, things that we've talked about. Um, and then all of them can even be turned into rocks or issues. So you have this more actions button. You can click on that and use make it an issue, create a to do, create a rock. So it makes it so you can really take some action with those goals. Our company rocks and our long-term issues automatically flow into here. So you don't have to worry about setting that up. If you've already created those on those individual pages, they'll show up here. And you can still click on these and edit from either place. The accountability chart is going to be automatically set up when you create your account. So it'll start with a visionary integrator and then those three main seats below, which are sales, operations, and finance. You can see I've done a little bit of customizing in here with adding a new seat, and then there's also seats below these. If I just press these expand buttons, we're able to see those. Um, but your default seats will be there, including roles and responsibilities. So all you need to do in order to change those is just press the edit button here, which will be able to update the title and then the roles. So you can see I can change the seat name. The roles I can move around, I can open them up, I can make edits, remove the default ones if I want to. So this is where you're going to be making all of those changes to the seat content. If you'd like to update the owner, they all start off looking like this. So you just click on the add seat holder, choose from the list of names. And then if you wanted to update that, you can just click and add. With seats below the visionary and integrator, we can actually add multiple people to a seat. So if you have any support positions, maybe sales positions, areas where there's multiple people doing the same roles and responsibilities, Go ahead and just put them all in one seat. That way you don't have to have that same seat, you know, five, ten different times. And if you do have a seat where, you know, you want to create a to-do or issue out of it, same thing where we have that more actions button here where you have those two options. Moving seats around and editing them is really easy. So you have left and right arrows to kind of just adjust the order here. And then let's say, you know, we wanted to take HR out of the leadership team and we wanted to put them below this finance seat. All we need to do is use the move to button, find finance in our list here. And then as soon as we save, we'll see that adjust down. So now my chart has loaded and HR is below that finance seat. And if I want to zoom out or anything, I can just take a little bit bigger step back and see the chart as a whole with our zoom buttons up here. Um, and then if I wanted to collapse everything down to the visionary integrator or expand everything to see the full chart, um, it's just those two buttons. So you have a couple quick actions up there in the top right. Feedback is going to be quarterly conversations and annual reviews. So the quarterly conversation is just a way to really connect, you know, your rocks, accountability chart seat, the VTO into one place where you're doing that manager direct report review. So if I come into these, one of these really quick, um, it just shows you, like, I'm the manager of this conversation. I'm reviewing myself on the company core values, the, the accountability chart seat, the rocks for the quarter. I'm prompted with questions along the way so I can be thinking about my comments. Um, and then I have this whole leadership assessment and management assessment as well where I can be reviewing my manager, Michelle. And when Michelle logs in, she's actually going to fill out the same two forms. She's going to review me up here and then review how she's doing herself. 
So it's a great way to have that back and forth feedback without one person feeling like they're the object of the review. And then with a quarterly conversation, since it's informal, it's face to face, you're just going to print out your information. So I just clicked on it and then over to the right here we have that PDF button. So export your document, um, bring it to that in-person conversation, and it's really just a way to get your thoughts together on what you guys want to talk about. The annual review is a little bit more formalized, so once each person fills out their forms, you can actually run a feedback meeting within the system, and that allows you to compare responses side by side here. You know, take and update notes during the meeting, um, sign and date it at the end, so it just creates a little bit more formalized of a process, and then you can save it and actually have an archive of that conversation that you both can go and look at, look at each other's responses, and then also any owner in the account. So that's a role set up for permissions. They can also view that content too. And process is going to be one of our last main applications. Um, process is set up here so that you can document your core processes. So the system comes pre-built with the top six. And then essentially the goal here is to say, all right, HR, what are my steps in HR? Um, so here's my HR steps. I have hiring. I know how to onboard people, give people feedback. Um, and then within each one of these, there's probably a fair amount of detail that we want to put in here. So within hiring, now I've got some sub steps within hiring. So I can see how we search for people, how we screen, how we interview. And throughout each of these, you can add as much detail. So you can um, you know, add details to this area, put links, write checklists, attach measurables, attach documents. You know, maybe you have a video you want to upload or a form somebody needs to fill out. It's a great central place to keep all this information so that anybody in the company can access and see how things are done. With the directory, this is really just a list of all your people. So you can add everybody in here. So each of your employees, first name, last name, email, all that does is make sure that they get onto your accountability chart. So going through that process, it doesn't physically invite them. It just lets them get onto the accountability chart. If you want to actually invite somebody like Matt here, maybe he's joining a level 10 meeting and we want to invite him. There's a button next to his name. We can put him on Teams, we can give him a role, which controls his permissions. And then as soon as we do that, he's gonna to go towards our build users. And the way our pricing works is just per user. So it's $12 per user per month for the first 25. And then we have tiers. So users 26 through 75 are $8, and then over that are $5. And that's the basics of running on the system. If I move myself over here, we'll be able to see this is a chat icon in the bottom right. So whatever questions you have, just reach out to our team. Um, you can see you can start a conversation right here. Look through our help articles. We've got videos just like this one, one-on-one -on -one training that you guys can call and schedule. So let us know how we can help, um, and we're happy to help you get started.